economy. Now, the financial crisis had a profound impact all around the world, not least on the finances of governments struggling to keep their economies on track. But it's also led to questions about how they actually manage their assets and funds. And that's the question at the centre of the Public Wealth of Nations, which examines and calls for changes in the way uh, nations' public commercial assets are managed. Well, countries have become so focused on managing debt that creating an increasing public wealth remains opaque and largely ignored. And according to calculations in the book, gains in public wealth could help to fund the world's investment in infrastructure such as transport, power, water and communications. Well, the book also says that public assets actually exceed debt by, well, a long way. Well, we're, we're joined by Dag Detter, who's co-author of this book that we've been talking about, The Public Wealth of Nations. Thanks for being on the programme. Thank you. Now, <coughs> Dag, you know, people listening to, the, to that explanation of your book will think, yes, I know lots of countries are in trouble financially. We've been talking about Greece today. But what are you actually talking about as a way of tackling this effectively? To the layman's watching us this morning, uh, what are you actually talking about here? Well, the fact is that all governments, and thereby all people, are sitting on a gold mine. And we have been focusing too much on the debt of governments around the world. And, and really, we have assets, what we call commercial assets, that could be managed much better and thereby producing a yield for governments that they could use. Uh, and what kind of things are we talking about? We're not we talking about hospitals and schools, no, are we? we're talking about everything that uh, could be generating a f an income. So we're talking about corporations like water corporations, railroads, etc. But <clears throat> most of all, we're talking about uh, real estate. So land? Yes, land and real estate. So I see why this would be a good idea. You can use the money, frankly, to pay down debts, reduce debts. You can use it to fund investment. But there will always be the critics that say you're selling off the family silver. These are the state-run assets, the state-owned assets that actually are propping up an economy. And once you've sold them, you can't get them back. Well, the, we're not talking about privatizations. We're trying to steer away from the, uh, the phony war that's been going on for the last 50 years. So instead of talking about ownership, it's about quality of uh, asset management. That by managing this more professionally, we can actually produce a yield that will benefit the people, the governments, and every nation on, on, in the world. So this is about doing it on a, on a sort of commercial level, rather than just a government sitting there thinking, look, we've got all these assets and they're kind of OK doing what they're doing. It's about getting expertise in to make them work harder. Yes. And, and the, the problem is that we, are, we, doesn't, we don't even know what we own today, and uh, even less are managing it quite well. And, and by changing that, we can actually produce a yield from these assets that would help us plug uh, uh, the government budget, lower taxes, or pay for infrastructure. How is your message received by governments? I mean, it all sounds fairly simple. It sounds like a no-brainer. We get more money in. But how is it actually received? And are governments doing this? I mean, obviously, there's pressure on Greece and other governments to look very carefully at every bit of money that comes in and every bit that's going out. Well, the, I think the process has just started. So I think this is good news for, for all governments that uh, would but need... But are governments receiving the message? That's my point. And are they getting the expertise We're in? We're starting today. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> when it comes to this idea of, of governments around the world selling off assets and privatising it, and, and as you say, trying to make that work harder, what's interesting is actually the converse is true in some way. You get sovereign wealth funds of some countries buying state-run assets of other countries. I mean, I'm thinking particularly those of the Middle East interested, for example, in, in stakes in the UK postal service when that was Royal Mail was sold off. Why are we seeing that sort of a trend when actually you're suggesting it should perhaps be the other way? Yes, <clears throat> what they could do instead is, is create a national wealth fund, which is more like an asset management uh, company, not like somebody managing the liquidity for... for, for uh, uh, but uh, an asset management company that, that um, a national wealth fund like Temasek in Singapore, Solidium in Finland, uh, Austria, lots of countries have these, and that would professionally manage these assets instead of selling it off uh, in a fire sale or when they desperately need the cash. Um, um, briefly, before we go, when it comes to those things of, of sales, it's hugely politically controversial, and particularly in the United States, where one party wants to sell off a big state-run enterprise, and frankly, you'll get the other one who said, this is not happening under our watch. 
but that's why you shouldn't talk about ownership or you know privatization and nationalization steer away from that debate because it hasn't led us anywhere mm. it's just a polarized debate mm. instead talking about quality of asset management would benefit all nations all countries all governments and all the people in the world Doug, that's a, we could talk for hours about this, but mm. unfortunately we haven't got the time. But thank you so much for thank coming you. in and sharing really your thoughts. An thank interesting you. read. Now tomorrow's guest is fund manager Catherine 